So now a little bit about the way that branches are encoded, but then let's get into some examples of how to take a high-level language structure like a conditional or a loop and convert it into assembly language with branches. The branches, the offsets are stored in the immediate field, which is 32 bits, and they're stored by the number of instructions that you want to branch, positive or negative, which means it's a signed 32-bit number, uh, which means it can go from negative 32,000 to positive 32,000, uh, and that's plenty of distance for most of the kind of relative branches that we're going to do. If you need to branch farther than that, uh, you can create a pseudo branch, which is a structure that uses a jump instead to be able to branch much, much farther. So if, for example, you were trying to branch, if these two registers were equal to the label called L1, and if L1 was too far away, what you can do and what the assembler will do is instead re replace that with an opposite branch to skip a jump, right? So we want to branch if equal to L1. What this is going to do is branch if not equal to L2 and skip over the long distance targeted unconditional jump. So wrapping this jump in a, in a conditional branch basically turns it into a branch, but we have to test on the opposite condition because if we uh, branching, if we want to branch on equality, we're basically jumping on equality, which means we're skipping the jump on non-equality. That's why MIPS uses branch equal and branch non equal because they're opposite conditions and it's very easy to sort of switch between one and the other. So this should never need to be done because the distance that you want to branch is usually far, far closer than 32,000 instructions. If you're branching more than 32,000 instructions, maybe there's a problem. Um, Again, as I said, the, the MIPS allows you to branch on, in, on equality and not equality. Those are the two sort of standard branches that we have available. There are also some branches that allow us to compare to zero, which are a little bit more involved, but they exist as regular instructions. But if you want to branch on comparing two numbers, if you want to branch on, you know, five is less than 10 or something like that, then you need a larger control structure. What you need to do first is you use one of the set instructions to set a register to one or zero based on the comparison, and then you can branch on the register that you set as either one or zero. So that's how we're going to do most of our comparison. That's how we're going to do most of our sort of general purpose uh, branching instructions. The set instructions, as we said in the previous video, are fairly simple. A destination register is set to either one or zero based on the comparison of the two other registers you are provided with. Again, it's an R format instruction. We ignore the uh, shift amount. The destination register now isn't the result of subtracting from RS to RT. Instead, it's this, this result of comparing them, either a one or a zero. And we have signed versions and we have unsigned versions. And notice again that we're missing some of these comparisons. Um, we have, what are the sets we have? We have set less than, that's it. We have set less than set less than and set less than immediate and set less than immediate unsigned. And that allows us to set both less than and greater than equal to if you want to use the opposite condition. So writing the set is going to be a bit of a trick. You need to know what order to put the RT and RS in order to get the comparison that you want to get, right? <clears throat> uh, if you want to do less than one direction or the other, you just rearrange the R, R, S, and R, T. And if you want to do greater than or equal to, you rearrange them in the other way, right? Because greater than or equal to is the opposite condition from less than. And so between set less than and your branch equal, you can do any condition you want, but it will take a little bit of complexity to write whatever condition you want. That makes a nice exam question. Given a condition that I want to test, how do you actually write the code to test it? So in high level language now, we have all sorts of program flow um, setups. We have if and else, we have while loops, we have do while fours, we have um, switch cases, a bunch of different kind of things, right? And we can write any of those in assembly language. So we'll do a few examples, a few very simple examples, and then we'll have another video with some more complexity. So the basic example of an if then statement is uh, check on an equality, and if the two things you're checking are equal, then you're going to do the thing. And this is an important one to look at because it gives us the, the introduction to the theme, which is going to be that we're testing the opposite condition in assembly language than we would think we would in high level language. In a high level language, we write an if like this. If two things are equal, then do the conditional block, right? C 
block gets done if these two are equal and it gets skipped if these two are not equal. But a branch works the opposite way. A branch, if it fails, then the next thing on our list happens, right? If the two things are equal, we're gonna just fall through and not do anything, right? The program counter doesn't get replaced and we execute C. If the branch succeeds, then we're gonna skip C, right? So here we say if the branch, if the comparison succeeds, we're gonna do C. And here we're gonna say if the comparison succeeds, we're gonna skip C. So we look at the opposite condition, but the program flow is the same, right? <clears throat> And again, it, when you're executing a branch, if the branch fails, then we just do the next thing in the list, right? So we don't need anything in here to say whether or not C gets done. It's the next thing in the list, right? And the, the why I have this label here is that after C gets done, then whatever else is after that gets done next. And so the branch points you to the instruction after the conditional clause. So this conditional clause gets performed if A equals B, it gets skipped if A is not equal B, but then after that, we go to the next thing, whatever it happens to be. The label for the branch in this case is pointing to the next thing after the conditional clause. Okay, so the complexity does get a little bit confusing, right? Because we're used to the idea of testing for the thing that will cause the conditional clause to be executed. Now we're testing for the thing that will cause the conditional clause to be skipped. Here's another example using a comparison. So now we're going to set some register to zero. We're going to test on some value. If this value is greater than or equal to some uh, immediate value, then we're going to do this conditional clause. And if it's not, if it's less than five, then we're going to do this clause. So this increment always gets done. This increment only gets done if the condition is met. So if the value is less than five, we're going to add two. Sorry, if it's greater than or equal to five, we're going to add two. If it's less than five, we're going to only add one. So it's a weird, bit of a contrived example, but it's an easy way to transition into uh, the way the code works. And uh, usually these would be variables, but in assembly language, variables get stored in memory and we have to bring them into registers using load. So to skip that complexity, we're just going to write it as if it was in registers. So first, we're going to put the value of one into A0 with load immediate. Then we're going to set less than, which by the way is a pseudo instruction uh, that gets translated into or immediate. Then we're going to set less than A0 and 5. So if A is less than 5, we're going to set T0 as a temporary sort of placeholder that will tell us whether our loop gets done or not. Then, <clears throat> so T0 gets to be 1 if A0 is less than 5. Okay. Now, this is already the opposite condition. We're looking at A0 greater than or equal to 5 here, but we're testing for A0 less than 5, and we're going to set on that. Then we're going to branch on not equal. So if this is 1, that means A0 was less than 5, and if A0 was less than 5, we want to skip the conditional clause. So we branch of not equal, uh, comparing T0 to 0, right? because T0 was the flag that we set, or the value that we set based on that condition, and we're going to jump, or branch, sorry, to the label if that condition is not met. So if A0 is less than 5, that will be set to be 1. And then if 1 is not equal to 0, then we're going to skip that conditional clause. So it's a set and then a branch not equal. This is a thing you're going to have to think about every single time. Because the condition that you write in the if statement is going to be opposite from the one that you test, or... Yeah, opposite from the one that you tested to branch, and you also often have to use an opposite set if the condition is different, right? We don't have a greater than or equal to, so we have to use less than. So it's going to be opposite twice, basically, which gets a little bit confusing, but you do want to write these things very carefully, okay? And then we skip the conditional clause and go on to the next clause. So this is a good example of all of the kind of level of complexity that you might find when trying to convert what appears to be a fairly simple conditional into assembly language. And your assembler will do all this for you, but the point of this course is to learn how it gets done yourself. So here's another one where if you have a uh, sort of in general, if A less than B, uh, do a C, and then maybe you do a D if the condition is not met. Right? This is an if-else, we call it. Right? If a condition is met, do C. If the condition is false, is not met, do D. In both cases, you don't want to do the other thing. So it's important to recognize that if A less B is true, we're going to do C and skip D. 
And if A less B is false, we're going to do D and skip C. So this is the way that this looks. First, we're going to set some temporary register based on A and B. And then we're going to branch on equality uh, to label 1, where we're going to do D and skip C, right? We're going to skip C and do D and then carry on. And then if we don't match this condition, then we're going to fall through here and do C. But then we always want, once we've got into C, we want to always skip D. Okay, so either we skip C and go to label 1 and do D and carry on, or we do C and skip to label 2 and carry on. That's the way that this structure is set up. Here's a direct example. And again, it's a bit of a contrived example, but it's similar to the one we had before. A0 greater or equal to 5, do this. And if it's not, then do this. And in either case, do this. Right? So if A is going to be less than 5, then we're going to subtract 1. If A is bigger than 5, we're going to add 1. And in both cases afterwards, we're going to add 2. For some reason, it's a bit contrived. So first of all, A gets 1. We load immediate with 1 into A. And then we're going to set less than, because we don't have any greater or equal, we can just compare with less than. right? Set less than A0 less than 5. T0 gets 1 for that. If that condition is met, then we want to do this A0 plus 1. So if we put A0 plus 1 here, then we want to skip that if the condition is not met. So if the condition is not met, the condition being greater than or equal to, then the T0 will be 1. So we want to branch if T0 is 1, in other words, not 0. We want to skip over to here. So if, if A0 is less than 5, that's what these two are saying, then we're going to skip the then and we're going to go to the else and subtract 1. But if T0 is 0, which means less than was true, which means this condition was false, um, or sorry, this condition was true, then we want to fall through and do the add one. So this says here, if a0 is less than 5, then we're going to jump here, which means if it's not less than 5, if it's greater or equal to 5, then we're going to do this one. But if we do this one, then we have to make sure we don't do the else. So after that, we do an unconditional jump, which gets us past the else clause and into the second label. You could do this in a number of different ways, because remember, you're always flipping some of the conditions right? <clears throat> we can, instead of flipping the conditions, we can flip the else and the then. We can put the else first, right? We can set less than and then branch on equality. Say, if the condition is true, go over here and call this the then. I'm in the way. Call this the then or the if clause. And then if this is false, we, we fall through to the else clause, and then we skip that. So we can put these two in either order, based on whether the condition we're testing is equality or inequality of the flag that we set when we compare this less than. Lots of different ways to do it and some confusion. So again, I would encourage you to practice, practice, practice writing these conditionals.